Hello, welcome back. Today we will discuss about audio frequency junctions and trunk circuits used in signaling devices or that is used in signaling. Here basically we are transmitting audio frequency signals over the junction. Over the junction means over the trunk or over the server which connects to exchanges. And of course we will deal with how this is constructed, how the trunks are, what are the circuits that are involved between two exchanges, all those things we will discuss under this heading. So with good understanding of two types of signaling that is channel associated signaling CAS and common channel signaling CCS, let us deal with how signaling is used for transmission of audio frequency signals over the trunks or junctions. So this is the circuit used for DC signaling. So basically we call this entire circuit as phantom circuit. Of course it is made up of 4 wire audio frequency line, 2 wire on this side and 2 wire on the other side. So this side is used for transmitting signals from one exchange to the another exchange via a particular trunk or junction. Similarly, on the other hand, the term, uh, this exchange is transmitting in the opposite direction to the another exchange in the opposite direction via this particular trunk or junction. The circuit that is used between two exchanges between two exchanges is said to be phantom circuit. So generally it is used for DC signaling over four wire audio frequency line. Of course, it is basically dealing with audio frequency junctions and trunk circuits used for DC signaling. So we will be dealing with transmission of continuous signals that is DC signals from one exchange to the another exchange via this phantom circuit. So this exchange is connected to the end user that is customer. Similarly, this exchange is also connected to another customer. So let us say this is a calling customer who is connected to this exchange via these two wires. So two wire line is used to connect a customer that is calling customer to a, an exchange. Since this is a calling customer, we call we can call this exchange as a we can call this entire exchange as a originating exchange. Similarly, let us assume with the help of two wires a called customer is connected to this particular exchange and we can call this exchange as a terminating exchange. So before we send any signal from one exchange to another exchange, so we usually do amplification. After this amplification, the signal is given to junction or trunk over which the signal is being transferred from one dis from one place to another place uh, and on the other at the receiving end also before the signal is given to the exchange we make use of amplifier and then given to the particular terminating exchange and of course that is given to the called customer if the distance between two exchanges is large then in between we need to make use of repeater sections so basically a repeater will regenerate whatever the signal that was generated by the transmitter end so, so whatever the signal was transmitted, it will amplify and regenerate that signal and that will be forwarded to next level. So if the distance between two exchanges is too long, in such case we need to make use of so many number of repeater sections one after the other. Basically repeaters that are involved, these four wire repeaters involved includes phantom circuit. Here we will be using two wire junction circuits between the exchanges to transmit loop disconnect signals. We know what loop disconnect signal is. It is something like make and break signals. Of course, it is a DC signal. So two wire junction circuits. So basically between two exchanges. So two wires junction circuits are used. Generally one wire will be connected to ground and with respect to ground. So we will be transmitting 
a positive signal or a negative signal from one end to the another end. Similar type of two wire circuits are used to have connection between customer and the exchange through customer line also. In order to provide a two wire phantom circuit for signaling, so what we are using is we are using an amplified four wire circuit with center tap transformer line transformer. So as you can see here, so we will be using an amplifier with center tap line transformers. So that is what constitutes a phantom circuit. As we have seen in customer line signaling, so we know that the signals to and from the caller to the exchange as well as those to and from the called customer to the exchange are basically sent to our different lines as we have seen in this figure 2. So, so with the help of two wires signal will be sent to the exchange from the calling person or called calling person as well as with the other wire. Similarly, we make use of two wire line to have send signals from called person to the exchange. Either it is to the exchange or from the exchange. However, for a junction call, we know what junction call is. So call which is making use of two local exchanges or between or we can call it as trunk call. So we can call such calls as junction call. So where two exchanges are involved, two exchanges are involved in establishing a call from the calling person to the called customer. So in such calls, so the forward sees and clear signals must be sent between the exchanges. Not only that, so this is what forward sees means call request signal as well as clear signals must be sent between the exchanges but also the backward answer and clear signals must be sent between the exchanges but not through two different wires but over the same line over the same trunk we can call or over the same circuit we have to send forward seal signal as well as forward clear signal similarly backward answer as well as backward clear signals must be sent over the same line and this is accomplished as follows. Let us consider how this is done inside a phantom circuit. So what we do is the originating exchange will use the loop and disconnect states. So we will discuss what loop and disconnect states is in more detail. So this is something like make and break signals that are used to send a continuous signal. So whatever we have discussed with respect to customer line signaling in the same way loop disconnect signals will be sent from the originating exchange to the terminating exchange. So the different signals includes forward C signal as well as clear signals forward clear signals. And also we will send dial pulses in this in the form of address signal we will send dial pulses in the form of address signals in the forward direction from the originating exchange to the terminating exchange. So for the forward signals that are received by the terminating exchange, so what it does is the terminating exchange will send back its answer signal by interchanging the battery and earth connections. So what we do is if let us say the originating exchange is transmitting some positive signal from originating exchange to the terminating exchange. So this terminating exchange will reverse the current direction and it will send the negative signal to the originating exchange. So what the terminating exchange is, it is sending its answer signal as well as backward clear signal by interchanging the battery and earth connections to the line. So this so this reversed current or thus reversing the direction of the line current. So what we do is, so just the terminating exchange will reverse the current direction. So in the sense, if it is receiving positive signal or positive pulse, it the terminating exchange reply with a negative pulse in the with the current direction being opposite. 
or reversing the current direction. Once the originating exchange receives the negative or negative going voltage or current in the negative direction, so the originating exchange will recognize this reversal by means of a polarized relay. So this is very important. Polarized relay is used at the originating exchange as well as at the terminating exchange in order to read whether the received signal is positive signal or whether the received signal is negative signal with respect to ground potential. So that is done with the help of polarized relay. Polarized relay is utilized on both originating exchange as well as at the terminating exchange also. So the terminating exchange sends its backward clear signal by removing the polarity reversal. Please note the terminating exchange will send answer signal with the negative direction by reversing the direction of the current line or line current. So but in the same way the terminating exchange should send backward clear signal also but please note that the clear signal that was sent from the terminating exchange to the originating exchange is not a negative direction but it is a positive direction signal. So that is that is by removing the polarity reversal. So whatever it has already sent the answer signal which was a negative signal and in order to send backward clear signal it will reverse whatever the previous polarity was in the sense it will be sending positive signal. So once the originating exchange receives the positive signal that is from the terminating exchange it will understand it is reading backward clear signal. So usually backward clear signal is used or being utilized to disconnect the call and we know that. So that is how junction call is being established with the help of two exchanges with positive of course with positive signals as well as negative signals transferred over the same line. In the early days we used to have continuous signals for in order to send different control signals something like C signal, forward clear signal, backward answer signal, backward clear signal between two exchanges. So but with the help of pulse signals if we are making use of pulse signals generally nowadays all signals all control signals are pulse signals so if you are using pulse signals it is possible to increase the number of signals different types of signals exchanges between two exchanges so by increasing we can increase the number of signals that are transferred between two exchanges by making use of pulse signals in addition to continuous signals which were used in the early days. Please note when signals are exchanged between registers. So if I am speaking about between registers, so whatever the originating exchange is between this originating exchange register has to send signal that is control signal. Similarly at the terminating exchange the register at the terminating exchange should receive the control signal. So generally signal exchange or control signal exchanges or signaling basically takes place between registers at two different exchanges. Generally what we do is generally we do delay before sending such control signals from the originating exchange to the terminating exchange until a register has been connected at the receiving exchange whether it may be a receiving exchange or terminating exchange. So both are approximately same. So from the originating exchange to the receiving exchange first what we need to do is we need to establish a connection between two registers in two exchanges. So once the connection is been established then we can start sending the required control signals that is signaling signals. So this is achieved by not sending digits or address signals until a proceed to send signal has been received. So this is what the thing is. So generally once the receiving exchange sends the proceed to send signal and once the originating exchange receives this proceed to send signal then only the originating exchange will send the address signal. So that is what 
sending digits is to the terminating exchange or receiving exchange in north america a short pulse of line reversal has been used as a proceed to send signal we know proceed to send signal is transferred from the receiving exchange to the originating exchange so generally they use short pulse of line reversal so we know what line reversal is if we are if this exchange is sending negative signal for the incoming positive signal so this is what line reversal is generally it uses a very short pulse in order to send proceed to send signal to the originating exchange generally when address information or address signal is sent between exchanges with the help of loop disconnect pulsing over a long distance or over a long line generally distortion is observed distortion of the pulse can cause errors in the received information sometimes the distance between two exchanges will be made connected with the help of long line so in such cases when we are sending loop disconnect pulsing which is a continuous signal something like this of course we know loop disconnect signaling is a make and break signal which is a continuous signal so generally distortion is observed because the line long line offers certain amount of capacitance as well as it offers resistance also so due to this whatever the pulse that we have transmitted at the transmitter end once it receives or once it transfers for long distance instead of this so it becomes or it loses its shape and of course it is charging at very quick rate but it tends to discharge at a slower rate due to the capacitance effect of long wire or long circuit or long line cable between the two exchanges so that results in pulse distortion and of course it is going to cause errors at the receiving end that is at the or the received information may be corrupted so let us consider figure 3 which basically defines distortion of loop disconnect pulses caused by disturbed capacitance oh sorry distributed caused by distributed capacitance of a long line so when we are using long line between two exchanges of course it is going to cause distributed capacitance so due to this pulse distortion is observed as we can see here this was the loop disconnect signal or a make and break signal that is being transferred from the transmitting exchange indicating some information or indicating some address signal but once it transfers over long distance over long line so we know distortion is observed and once the receiving exchange receives this exchange it will reconstruct the signal it will reconstruct the signal what it has received so depending upon certain levels so we we will have some thresholds something like operate current if the operate current is above this it will go to some higher voltage level and if the operate level is less than this it is release current call it as release current so it will go to below voltage let us say it has zero voltage similarly you can assume this as zero voltage and this has some higher voltage level let us say 5 or 12 volt like that so as you can see here this was the transferred information or transferred pulse but the reconstructed pulse is something different from the transmitted pulse here we are using shorter duration for make and longer duration for break but instead here we are having longer duration for make and shorter duration for break at the receiving exchange so this results in error in reconstructed information so as shown in figure 3 we know the capacitance of the line causes a slow decay of the pulse waveform so slow decay in the pulse waveform is observed so this is occurring because of the 
capacitance offered by the long line between two exchanges. If the distance between two exchanges is very large in that case, the capacitance will be large and in that scenario, the waveform discharges very slowly, very slowly and that results in wrong information at the receiving end. So the output break from the receiving relay will be shorter than what was originally sent. So the break was larger but instead at the receiving end whatever we observed is a shorter break signal. So this non-symmetrical waveform shown in figure 3b. So this is, this is something but this is not the same as what we have observed here. So that's why we call it as non-symmetrical. If it is going down or if it is the voltage is discharging at the same rate at what the signal has gone up. In such case we might have said this as a symmetrical waveform but right now whatever we observed here is a non-symmetrical waveform. So this non-symmetrical waveform occurs with loop disconnect pulsing. So because we are using loop disconnect pulsing or make break pulsing generally we observe non-symmetrical waveform. So we need to eliminate this non-symmetrical waveform in order to prevent distortion absorbed at the receiving end or in order to prevent the error absorbed at the receiving end. We will observe this non-symmetrical waveform because the sending impedance of the circuit is zero at the transmitting end. But in the loop state and infinite in the disconnect state. While we send signal, so the impedance offered by the circuit is almost very less. But once it is discharging, the impedance offered by the circuit is very high due to customer line or due to long line. So, so that impedance mismatch must be eliminated. So this pulse distortion, whatever we observed in figure 3b, that can be reduced and the signaling range can be increased by making use of a waveform that is symmetrical. So if we are observing symmetrical waveform for both positive going as well as negative going. So in such case, we can reduce the pulse distortion absorbed at the receiving end. And also we can send such signals for longer distances. So signaling range can be increased. And in order to have this, what the symmetrical waveform would look like is as shown in this figure 4. So for make, so what we are doing is we are sending signal from negative side to the positive side and again when it breaks we will reverse the current direction from positive to negative and of course whatever the line we have shown in the middle this is something like zero voltage level or zero current level. So for making also for making we will have some positive operate current level. Similarly for breaking we will have operate current level that is negative operate current level. Based on this we will observe how make and break are being made at the receiving exchange. Of course in order to have this or in order to read this type of signal or in order to send this type of signals through junction we have to make use of polarized relays instead of general relays at both originating exchange as well as receiving exchange we have to make use of polarized relays so this figure 4 shows how pulsing by current reversals is made this is what the pulsing the help of current reversal so this was the positive current and the negative current and generally this pulsing by re reverse current or current reversal is sometimes called as double current working. Double current because we are dealing with positive current versus negative current that's why sometimes this pulsing method is said to be 
डबल करेंट वर्किंग फिगर ये शोस इनपुट पल्स एट सेंडिंग एंड सो वेवर वी हैव शोन हियर दिस फिगर ये शोस दिस इनपुट पल्स एट सेंडिंग एंड एंड दिस इज व्हाट फिगर बी इज व्हिच शोस अराइवल करेंट वेव फॉर्म सो इज व्हाट द करेंट अब्जॉर्ब बाय द रिसीविंग एक्सचेंज arriving current waveform and of course output pulse from receiving polarized relay is shown in this figure c so once the signal is received at the receiving exchange so this waveform will be reconstructed with the help of polarized relay output pulse from receiving polarized relay is shown in figure c as we can see from figure a and figure b so both are going to be same so here in such case we don't observe any distortion or pulse we don't observe any pulse distortion or whatever the information that is sent from the originating exchange same information will be observed at the receiving exchange also so with the help of this double current working so whatever we have shown here double current working going positive as well as going negative so it, we have designed long distance direct current signaling systems so generally long distance direct current signaling systems are also called as ldc signaling systems which basically deals with sending control signals for longer distances of course this signaling system was designed to obtain symmetrical waveform with the help of double current working methodology so once we are using symmetrical waveform we are going to eliminate distortion observed at the receiving exchange as we have seen pulses are sent by polarity reversals so instead of sending makes and breaks we make use of pulses being sent by polarity reversals so we maintain sending impedance to be same as that of the receiving impedance whatever the impedance offered by the system to send positive going signal same impedance will be offered for sending a negative going impulse also so with the help of this so the duration of the received pulse will be exactly equal to that of the transmitted pulse from the originating exchange as shown in figure 4 so whatever the pulse we have sent from originating exchange will be same as that of the pulse received at the terminating exchange please note the positive going and negative going pulses are received with the help of polarized relays so both exchange should make use of polarized relays between which the control signal will be exchanged generally this polarized relay will be more sensitive to both positive going and negative going signals or pulses so with the help of this polarized relays the signaling range can be increased by the sensitivity of the polarized relay as well as by the reduction in pulse distortion so once we are using polarized relay we are able to send signal for longer distance as well as we are able to reduce the pulse distortion that was observed as shown in figure 3 so such pulse distortion can be reduced so this long distance dc signaling whatever we have discussed dc signaling between two exchange with the help of pantom circuit so this long distance dc signaling is not used nowadays it is of historical interest since most long distance circuits are now provided in high capacity multiplex transmission systems generally when we are dealing with long distance circuits that is when the exchange originating exchange and receiving exchange are of long distance in such cases nowadays we will be using high capacity multiplex transmission systems of course if i am speaking multiplex there are two types of multiplexing one is frequency division multiplexing and the other one is time division multiplexing of course we will discuss both frequency division multiplexing carrier system as well as tdm carrier carrier system 
that is basically for signaling. So once we are using high capacity multiplex transmission system, it is possible to send signals over long distance with minimum pulse distortion. Of course, in our next lecture, we will discuss what frequency division carrier system is about how we are able to send signaling signals from originating exchange to the receiving exchange in a easier manner. Thank you.